Welcome to Polk Place. I'm Brian Lacey and joining me in studio is the Polk County Supervisor of Elections, Lori Edwards. Welcome to the show. Thank you. Good to be here, Brian. Well, I want to talk with you a little bit. Uh, you know, as they say in the cartoons, they used to say duck season, rabbit season. We have election season yes, upon us. Yes, we do. So talk to me a little bit about, you know, what's the Supervisor of Elections Office uh, have going on? What's it been doing? Well, we've been recruiting and training election workers recently. You know, as you know, running elections in Polk County depends on members of our community who are so willing to put forth the effort to come and work a long, hard day on election day. So we're training them and we still have a few openings. So what are the most important things that the voters need to, to realize right now? I think the most important thing I'd like to share is deadlines. August 13th is the last day that you can request a ballot to be mailed for the August 23rd election. And then the other important deadline, if you're more interested in the November election, that's when all the excitement happens, October 10th, that's the final day that you can register if you want to cast a ballot for that November general election. And not one to be short on props. <laughs> I got this in the mail yesterday from the supervisor go. of elections. It's my new card. It's where I'm to vote. And it's our tax dollars hard at work and you guys do a fantastic job. Don't well, you? thank you. <laughs> One thing that we need to talk about, a reapportionment year. Yes. What exactly does that mean? And that has to do with the card, so it was good timing on that. The Florida legislature has redistricted. They've changed all the state legislative districts and congressional districts. When that happens, we had to change some of the precincts to align with those new districts. So some voters will be voting at different polling locations. So we sent every single voter in Polk County a new voter information card, just like Brian held up, exactly like that. You need to look for that in the mail because on there is going to say where your polling site is. And it may be different than it was in the past. We always use terminology, and, and one thing that I'm hearing news-wise, closed primary. What does a closed primary mean? I'm so glad you brought that up because people get very confused, and sometimes they even get a little perturbed about Florida's closed primary state. It's a state law, and it says that only people who are registered as registered Democrats can vote in the Democratic primary. Mm -hmm. Only people who are registered voters are registered as Republican can vote in the Republican primary. And sometimes, especially if you came from another state or just weren't aware, you were hoping to vote in a different primary election. However, there are things on the ballot that are there for everybody. The county judges, everybody gets to vote on. Democrat, Republican, no party affiliation, minor party. Also, very important, four school board races are going to be decided during this August 23rd primary, and that's open to everybody. As I opened up my card yesterday, um, I'm lucky because I have yet to have to go to a new polling place. In my previous address, I think I had three or four there. Mm -hmm. So what determines where I'm going to vote? Well, we look, of course, first and foremost for voter convenience. I will tell you, though, that in the last couple years, we are finding great difficulties in finding community partners with facilities that are willing to open them up to the voters. I'm um, a little surprised by this, certainly a little concerned by it. So more and more polling locations are saying, we don't want the voters there anymore. And it makes the job, of course, a little more difficult mm -hmm. for us. And it can result in one changes, as you mentioned at your previous address, or also a little inconvenience for our voters on election day. When we talk inconvenience, we try and, and, and get them in and out, but in the event that there are long lines, how can voters avoid long lines? That's a great question because people worry about the lines. I can say the only time that there's ever a little line in Polk County is generally at 7 o'clock in the morning on Election Day because lots of people want to just be there all at the same time. But my tip as far as avoiding lines on Election Day is if you possibly can, vote between 9 or 10 a.m. in the morning and 3 or 4 in the afternoon. Now, if you really want to um, avoid the line, you can vote by mail. And also early voting sites are open. How do you... Uh go through the process of voting by mail. It is so easy and I find more and more people, they vote by mail, they think they're only going to do it once because of a special circumstance and then they vote by mail forever, they just love it. You can call our office at 534-5888 or you can go online to our website, polkelections.gov, request a mail ballot and we'll get it into the mail to you right away. You have until election day at 7 p.m. to get that ballot back to us. And how do they go about returning it to you? 
Well, they can drop it off at our office. We have the office in Bartow or one in Winter Haven. They can mail it back to us and we're paying the, post the return postage. So you don't even have to find a stamp. Additional to that, if neither of those ways work for you, early voting sites at nine convenient locations around the county, each of those sites has a drop box that you can put your voted vote by mail ballot in. Now you had mentioned early voting sites, nine different places. Lucky for us here at the county, just down the road on uh, right. Polk. That's right. It? On Polk Street. Yes. Uh, I managed to run down there during my lunch or after work. Uh, talk about how easy that is and, and what they're going to need in the event that they want to vote early. Okay. Early voting, as we mentioned, nine convenient locations. They're open seven days a week from 10 a.m. to 6 p.m. So you can kind of catch it after work if you need to or in the middle of the day. And the only thing that you really need is to bring some photo ID with you. Um, generally, most people bring their driver's license or Florida voter ID. And it needs we need an ID with a signature and a photo on it. And you go to the early voting site, and it's easy as can be. In this instance, early voting will open on August 13th for the primary. You had mentioned briefly what some of the races were. How do we go about getting a sample ballot? That's excellent. We're going to have a sample ballot in the newspaper. You can't miss it in the ledger. Additional to that, we will be mailing a sample ballot to every home that has a voter. Those will be going out very soon, so you'll get it in the mail. Or finally, you can go online to our website again, pollcollections.gov, do voter lookup, look yourself up, and then you have to kind of scan around that page, but it'll say sample ballot. Hit that link, and it's on your computer. At the start of the interview, we had heard that, you know, training election workers. What if somebody's interested in, in becoming an election uh, worker? Oh, we would love for them to get in touch with us right now. Just give us a call or go to our website. Um, that's the easiest way. Again, 534-5888, and we'll put you to work. And you know what most people don't realize? These are paid positions. And beyond the money, everybody that does it, and comes back more than once, finds it very rewarding. It's excellent community service, and it's a social event, too. Got about 30 seconds left. Anything else you want to touch on? The main things I want folks to know this election is double check that polling location for Election Day, because it may have changed. Well, uh, I want to thank you for coming in today. Doing the primaries now in August, but you will come back and see me before the elections in November? I'm looking forward to it. All right, come back and see me again soon, please. Thanks, Brian, it was a pleasure to be here. The Supervisor of Election maintains a list of registered voters for Polk County. The Supervisor also qualifies candidates for this county office and receives candidate campaign financial disclosure reports. Now, the office administers all election and provides support for municipal elections, secure polling places, hires and trains election workers, and provides information and statistics on voter registration, voter and elections. The supervisor of election is an elected four-year term. Now, if you need more information on the office or voting or anything, look them up on the web, Polk Elections, or give them a call, 863-534-5888.